felt fresh air on your face as you walked out the door, encountered new colleagues and had great discussions and felt in awe when you found something new. But I bet there's something that you didn't think about today, something so close to home that you probably don't think about it very often at all. And that's that all those sensations, feelings, decisions and actions are mediated by the computer in your head called your brain. Now, the brain may not look like much from the outside, a couple pounds of pinkish gray flesh, amorphous, but the last hundred years of neuroscience have allowed us to zoom in on the brain and to see the intricacy of what lies within. And they've told us that this brain is an incredibly complicated circuit made out of hundreds of billions of cells called neurons. Now, unlike a human designed computer where there's a fairly small number of different parts, we know how they work because we humans design them. The brain is made out of thousands of different kinds of cells, maybe tens of thousands. They come in different shapes. They're made out of different molecules and they project and connect to different brain regions. And they also change different ways in different disease states. Just to make it concrete, there's a class of cells, a fairly small cell, an inhibitory cell that quiets its neighbors. It's one of the cells that seem to be atrophied in disorders like schizophrenia, called the basket cell. And this cell is one of the thousands of kinds of cell that we are learning about. New ones are being discovered every day. As just a second example, these pyramidal cells, large cells, they can span a significant fraction of the brain. They're excitatory. And these are some of the cells that might be overactive in disorders such as epilepsy. Every one of these cells is an incredible electrical device. They receive inputs from thousands of upstream partners and compute their own electrical outputs, which then, if they pass a certain threshold, will go to thousands of downstream partners. And this process, which takes just you know, a millisecond or so, happens thousands of times a minute. And every one of your hundred billion cells as long as you live and think and feel. So how are we going to figure out what this circuit does? Ideally, we could go through this circuit and turn these different kinds of cell on and off and see whether we could figure out which ones contribute to certain functions and which ones go wrong in certain pathologies. If we could activate cells, we could see what powers they can unleash, what they can initiate and sustain. If we could turn them off, then we could try and figure out what they're necessary for. And that's the story I'm going to tell you about today, an odyssey where we've gone through over the last 11 years through an attempt to find ways of turning circuits and cells and parts and pathways of the brain on and off, both to understand the science and also to confront some of the issues that face us all as humans. Now, before I tell you about the technology, the bad news is that uh, a significant fraction of us in this room, if we live long enough, will encounter perhaps a brain disorder. Um, already a billion people have had uh, some kind of brain disorder that incapacitates them. And the numbers don't do it justice, though. These disorders, schizophrenia, Alzheimer's, depression, addiction, they not only steal away our time to live, they change who we are. They take our identity and change our emotions and change who we are as people. Now, in the 20th century, there was some hope that was generated through the development of pharmaceuticals for treating brain disorders. And while many drugs have been developed that can alleviate symptoms of brain disorders, practically none of them can be 